Hi, everybody. In almost every e-commerce website, there will be a function to enlarge product images on the product detail page. This function will help users see smaller details from images, thereby deciding whether to buy that product or not. This is an extremely simple function with just a few short lines of code, but for new developer, it will be a difficult problem, and some will have to embed some libraries to do it. Get this function, but not. In this video, I will guide everyone to create this function very simply with just a few lines of code. If you find it interesting, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to watch more interesting videos and leave a comment. Maybe it will become the topic for the next video. First, I will have to create an element ID image zoom, which will contain the image we need to zoom inside. In CSS, I will need to specify a fixed size for this element. For example, I give width 550 pixels, height 700 pixels. I put a red border here so we can see its size on the screen better. The image located inside this element will have the same size as that element. That is width and height are 100%. When we set width and height for an image, we need to add the object fix cover property to ensure the image is not distorted. In addition, with the object property position top zero left zero to determine the priority position to take. In fact, the principle of creating an image zoom effect does not happen with the image itself, but will be a copy of it. As follows. In the image zoom element, I create a virtual before element. This is a special child element that is generated without declaring it inside HTML. I gave it display block. The content attribute must be declared if you want this element to display. Its size is also 100% of the parent element. Black background color. And this is it. If I now insert a background image that coincides with the image that needs to be zoomed in, will I get a copy of the original image? However, the after element is an element that cannot be manipulated and changed directly in HTML or JavaScript. Therefore, for attributes whose values will change, we cannot write them directly here. Instead, in the HTML, I pass in a URL variable whose value is the path of the image to be zoomed. In CSS, I change the declared URL variable here. This is the correct way to do it. Since the after element will take on the role of the zoomed image, its background size will be 200%. If you want to zoom larger or smaller, just change this value. And the initial position is 0% from the left of the image and 0% from the top. When we change the value of these two parameters, the position of the zoom image being displayed will also change. That means these two values will change. So we can't declare it directly here. I created the variables zoom x and zoom y to be the coordinates of the zoomed image position. Then change the variable to the corresponding position in the background position. From now on, when the value of the variable changes, the position of the zoomed image will change accordingly. Besides, this zoom element only appears when we hover the mouse over the image, right? This means that the value of the display attribute will also change. So I created a display variable with the value none to hide this element. When this variable value changes to block, it will be displayed. So we have everything we need. Now we just need to use JavaScript to change the variable values accordingly, and the function will complete immediately. In JavaScript. First, I call back the image zoom element with get element by ID. When the user moves the mouse over this element, I will proceed to run a function. The first thing I will do is change the display none variable value to block to show the zoomed element. Next. I will calculate the position of the current mouse pointer to choose the appropriate zoom position. With event offset x is the distance from image zoom's left margin to the cursor, and offset y is the distance from the top margin of the zoom image to the cursor. For example, when I hover here, then this distance is 276 pixels. This distance is 372 pixels. However, the unit we need must be. So look here. If we have a rectangle with width 550 px corresponding to 100%, and the position we need to calculate has a width of 225%, our responsibility is to know how many of the width of this element it has reached. The simple formula is 225 pixels multiplied by 100% and divided by 550 pixels, which is the width of the element, and the result is 40%. In JavaScript, the position of the cursor along the x-axis is offset x. The width of the element being hovered is offset width. So we just need to put this formula into JavaScript to calculate the percentage of cursor coordinates along the x-axis. 
Similarly, with y-axis, I have the element's height as 700 pixels, which corresponds to 100%. To calculate how many 400 px will be, I will take 400 pixels, multiply by 100%, then divide by the height of the element being hovered. And the result is 57%. Apply to JavaScript. Then the position of the mouse cursor along the y-axis will be offset. And the height of the element being hovered will be offset. It's simple, isn't it? Now we will replace it into JavaScript. So we have the mouse cursor position in units. Now I just need to put the value I just found into the variables zoom x and zoom y to display the corresponding zoom position that needs to be zoomed. Don't forget to add the unit at the end, so it works. It has worked very well, hasn't it? But that's not all. The zoomed element will have to be hidden when we move the mouse out of the image zoom elements area. So I'm going to catch another mouse out event. When the user moves the mouse out of the image zoom elements range, change the display variable value to none to hide the zoom element. And that's all we need to do with JavaScript to create this function simple right. Now I will use CSS to move the zoom element over the original image as follows. In the parent element, I add the position relative attribute. Then the after element with the position absolute attribute will easily move anywhere in the parent elements area. It will be zero pixels from top and zero pixels from left. So that's all we need to do to be able to create image zoom functionality in e-commerce websites. It's really simple, isn't it? Without the support of any library. If you find it interesting, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to watch more interesting videos every day. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment. Maybe it will be our topic in the next video. Thank you, everyone. See you again in the next video.